Ready? Good morning! May the fourth be with you. Us and also with you, thank you. Happy Star Wars Day to all of you who wore something. How many, stand up if you wore something Star Wars related to school. All right, good job. Princess Leia, right, there we go. Where's Unky Stu? Have you guys, look back and see Unky Stu's outfit. He's Chewbacca or something. <laughs> or R2-D2. All right, sit down. Shh. Sit down. Today's going to be a great day because we're going to hear from our fourth grade class. They're going to tell us about this important guy named Jesus. And today we're also going to be able to celebrate baptism. Today's going to be exciting, right? Yeah. So let's start off by standing and beginning in the name of our great God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So one of the things that the first, fourth graders are going to talk about today is uh, purpose and using our gifts. And we're going to take, take a time of confession because there's times where we don't use our gifts. And so we're going to ask for God's forgiveness for that right now. I just invite you for silent prayer as we think about that. And we're going to read the words on the screen together. Dear Jesus, please forgive all my sins. Well, because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross, I can stand here and tell you today, all your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. All right. We know that the Lord is our source of joy and his love is never ending, right? So we're going to sing a really fun song called Deep and Wide. I think you know it. It goes deep and wide, deep and wide. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide, deep and wide. Switch the words around wide and deep. Five, six, yeah, then wide, wide and deep. There's a fountain flowing wide and deep. Nice job. I saw some hand motions. You may be seated. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides. So God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone it is the same God at work. Just looking. What for? Pigs. What? Pigs, we look for pigs. Why? Just cause. Cause why? Because I need money. Okay. My brother's helping me. Hmm? We don't get it. It's a long story. Tell us. Well, I want to buy a soccer ball. Okay, and? When I asked my big brother if he'd give me $20, he said, sure I will, when pigs fly. So we're looking all over, but we can't find any pigs. That's just an idiom. A what? An idiom. You calling me a name? No, no, it's an expression, like when you say one thing, but you really mean something else. Huh? Never mind. Why do you need the soccer ball anyway? 
Because I'm not good at anything. We don't understand. Well, everyone at school is good at something. Math, spelling, reading, baseball, singing, art. Yeah, so? But not me. I can't do anything. I'm just a loser. That's not true. You're the most popular kid at school. But there's nothing that I'm good at. I wanted to buy a soccer ball so I can practice and get really good at soccer. And the kids remembered something they learned in school, something that Miss Begon had talked about last week in discipleship. Hey, Jane, remember what Miss Begon talked about last week at school? You know, the fruit of the spirit, talents and stuff? Sort of. Maybe Miss Begon could help us. <coughs> Let's go see if she's still at school. Did you forget something? No. Jane has a problem. She doesn't think she's good at anything. Why, Jane, you're good at lots of things. No, I'm not. Remember what we talked about in discipleship last week? Wasn't it about things that God has given us, talents and things? Yes. Every single person, each one of us, has special talents and gifts that we've been given. But that's the problem. I don't know what mine is. I think maybe God forgot me. Why, Jane, you know that God doesn't forget anything. He has a plan for us all. Well, okay, I was going to do this tomorrow in class, but since you're all here anyway, maybe this is a good time. What's that, Mrs. Begon? It's a special box that represents something. Do you know what represents means? Is it when something stands for another thing? Right, gather around so you can all see. It has presents. Wow, look at all those bows. Can we see? Sure you can, but one at a time, please. You see, I've been thinking about our Bible lesson on talent. Remember that God gives us these special gifts. Does anyone remember what some of those gifts are? Big, strong, you need that football like me. <laughs> good, what else? How about being good at singing like me? Me, me, me. <laughs> yes, yes, I think you're getting the idea. Some people are good actors like me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are catching on. Let's look in the box. Why look here? Hey, is that my name? Why, yes, Amy, it's a ukulele. It's here because you're a talented musician. God has given you the talent of music. Here's another one, Artie. For me? Yes, Artie, it's a microscope. A microscope? We've all seen you in science class. Yeah, you know all the answers. Well, I do really like science, thanks. And Lauren? Oh, goody. And Lauren, this is for you to remind you of your special gift. God gave you some wonderful artistic talent. Is that a really good talent, Miss Begon? I mean, it just comes easy to me. I never thought of it as anything very special. Oh yes, Lauren, it's a wonderful gift. In fact, a long, long time ago, in the time of Moses, there was a man named Bezalel, who was a very talented artisan. Who? What was his name? His name was Bezalel. Can you all say that? Bezalel. Okay, can you say, ring the bell? Ring the bell. Good, now it rhymes. Say, ring the bell, Bezalel. Ring the bell, Bezalel. Much better. Anyway, back to our story. Then the story of Bezalel, who was called the chief artisan of the tabernacle. He was a master workman and showed tremendous skill in working with precious metals, stone, and wood carving. God told Moses to put Bezalel in charge of making certain that the tabernacle of the desert was constructed just right. God also gave Bezalel great wisdom and knowledge so he could use his gifts to glorify the Lord. So mine's pretty important, right? Yes, Lauren, all these gifts are important. No one gift is better than the other. They're just different. What about me, Mrs. Bigon? Is there a present for me, too? Why, Sophie, look here. This one has your name on it. Oh. <laughs> Sophie, don't you see? This one again pencil represents something very special. They do? Yes, they represent the wonderful stories and poems that you write all the time. That's a gift that God chose just for you. Maybe someday... You'll write a book or poems for others to read to make them smile or give them encouragement. Do you really think so? Absolutely. What's the matter, Jane? See, Miss Bigon, I still don't have a talent. Everyone has one but me. Why, Jane, that's not true. There's one more gift in here. Really? Why don't you take a look? But I don't understand. It's just a mirror. What does that mean? Jane, take a good look in that mirror. If you look hard, you'll see a wonderful, compassionate young woman. You are an encourager, a faithful friend to others. You show self-control, are honest, 
and are always generous to your classmates. And who knows, Dane, what God will do with you in the future. He has great plans for you. Don't ever forget that. He might still get a soccer ball and become a star player, or maybe not. But God knows how he wants to use your life, and he'll let you know when the time comes. So you see, Jane, you were looking all over, and what you were looking for was here all along. Thanks, Miss Bigon. Each of us has been uniquely made to serve his kingdom, even when we feel like we're not good enough. God made you who you are for a reason, even if you don't see it. He will use you to do great things. Please bow your heads to pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day and the opportunity to share your word. Thank you for the amazing gifts and talents you've given all of us. Please be with all of us and help us realize the amazing gifts you have given us. And Show us how they, can, how they can use those gifts to serve you. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. That was great. That's a great setup for baptism, too. I invite the baptismal party to come forward at this time. Is Walker in? Oh, Walker's coming. Okay, I was going to say, is Walker in the building? There you go. You can hold that. Thank you. Baptism is a great gift of God. I can't think of a better day than Star Wars Day because we say, "May the Force be with you." And in Star Wars, it's an impersonal force. It talks about whether you might do good or bad, depending on who you are in Star Wars. But, but in baptism, it's a very personal force. Instead of impersonal, it's our great God, three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the force of God in your life always works good. The force of God in your life always gives you a special gift, just as we saw. You have a purpose, you're part of his family, and it's just ordinary water with the power of God's word that God works a miracle. Jesus, before he ascends into heaven, says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and then making this incredible promise. I am with you always to the very end of the earth. Point to your heart. Jesus is with you always. The force is with you when Jesus is with you. He always works good. And as a reminder of that, let me put the sign of the cross over your head and over your heart. You are just so doggone cute. Because you're one saved by Jesus, our Lord and Savior. All right, are we ready? Walker, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So this is your baptismal candle. It's a reminder that this is your birthday when God welcomed you into his family, that God put his force in your heart and life. And each year is a reminder... Uh, Pastor Travis says you have to have a cake, maybe a Star Wars cake. I'm not sure. But that that light of Christ is going to shine in your heart. Let's pray. Gracious God, you give incredible gifts, especially in the miracle of the waters of baptism. I thank you that Walker is part of your family. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you welcome him with open arms. I thank you for the great gift of faith. I thank you for all the gifts you are going to give him that he will use for your honor and glory, that your kingdom might grow. May your hand always be upon him. May he fulfill that unique purpose you have for his life. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Oh, let me go show him off. He's so doggone cute. You are just cute. cute. Look at that. How cute you are. Oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, wave at the people. There you go. Wave at the people. There you go. <laughs>
Let's again welcome God's newest member in his family. Thank you so much. There you go. Thank you. So we couldn't find the offering plates when you came in. Uh, so on the way out, you'll have an opportunity to give an offering if you'd like to. Uh, with that, let's, let's say the Lord's Prayer together, shall we? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. All right. Shout it back at me. He is risen. He is risen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is he still performing miracles? Yes. yes, he is. Is he still rolling stones out of our lives? Yes, yes he is. So we're going to sing it to him. Shadows, bound for the gallows, a dead man walking to love him calling. Rise up, rise up, rise up, six feet under. I thought it was over. The answer to prayer, the voice of the Savior. Rise. I sing as you gave me a song of revival. I put it on final. Rise up, rise up, rise up. I once was blinded, but now I see it. I heard about the power, and now. Thought that it was too far gone For everything I've done wrong Yeah, I'm the one who dug this grave But you call my name You call my name I thought it was too far gone yeah, yeah. And everything I've done I've never done this great, but you call my name, you call my name. about the water, but when we combine it with God's word, it has the power of the Holy Spirit. Today you witnessed a miracle. The Holy Spirit entered Walker, and because the Holy Spirit now is alive and well in Walker, he is filled with the power of God, and not like the silly power of Star Wars, but 
with the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the resurrection lives in Walker and it lives in you. We're different because the power of God lives in us. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Jesus is risen. lives in you. A resurrected Jesus is yours. We're so excited that Walker shared his baptism with us today. Thank you to his family for choosing chapel to baptize him and that we got to be a special part of that. Have a great day, friends. Jesus be with you. Ushers, you may dismiss. Mm -hmm.